But for us, a very important observation is that India is not part of this alliance. You can see here, India excluded from United States of America led Pax Silica Alliance. Firstly, we'll understand about Pax Silica and its importance, why it has been announced at this particular time. And more importantly, we'll try to answer this question. Why India has been excluded from this all important Silica, Pax Silica Alliance. Hello and welcome to UPS Simplified. In today's video lecture, we are going to discuss about a topic that has been in headlines for the last few days. The agenda for today's discussion is Pax Silica, an alliance which was recently announced under the leadership of United States of America for development of critical minerals ecosystem. Of course, the announcement itself is huge, but for us, a very important observation is that India is not part of this alliance. You can see here, India excluded from United States of America led Pax Silica Alliance. In this video lecture, firstly, we'll understand about Pax Silica and its importance, why it has been announced at this particular time. And more importantly, we'll try to answer this question, why India has been excluded from this all important Silica, Pax Silica Alliance. At the end of the discussion, we'll also talk, talk about what future holds for us. So let's begin our discussion. As I told you recently in December 2025, United States of America has launched Critical Technology and Minerals Coalition. But a very important thing for us to observe is minus India. India is missing from this alliance. US State Department has announced this strategic initiative which has been launched under Donald Trump administration with an intention to secure and build a prosperous and innovation driven silicon supply chain. I have to highlight here the name silica is quite symbolic for the entire I would say electronic arena development or the emerging tech development. There are two terms here Pax the meaning of Pax is peace, stability and long term prosperity for everyone and silica it is a compound term because you know that silica has a lot of importance in fabrication in the electronic chip fabrication. So in computer chips it forms one of the foundational elements so it's quite symbolic although it's not just about silica as I mentioned it's about critical minerals that are extremely important for development of high technology electronic chips and this alliance it was announced in December 2025 there are totally nine members of course it is led by United States of America apart from that there are eight members Japan South Korea Singapore Netherlands United Kingdom Israel, I'll highlight this here, Australia and another player, United Arab Emirates. Apart from these eight nations, Canada and the European Union are participating uh, as observers in the Silica, Pax Silica Alliance. Now question that beckons in front of us is that why Pax Silica has been announced? What is its core objective? According to statement by US State Department, Pax Silica is being created to reduce coercive dependencies on any single nation. Again, China has not been mentioned particularly, but there was a clear indication towards Chinese dominance here. Why? Because in the entire supply chain of rare earth elements and critical minerals, China has a lead. If you look at Chinese dominance in rare earth minerals, China ranks number one in terms of reserves, not just reserves, in terms of extraction also, and in terms of mining, refining capacity and development of rare earth magnets as well. So currently the total of global, to the total global reserves are 48% there. Apart from this, these reserves itself, they have a lot of lead in terms of rare earth mineral development. China has overwhelming control of global rare earth supply, which are critical in the new emerging technologies. You do know that rare earth minerals are used in high end electronics, emerging technologies we all have ushered in the era of artificial intelligence now in the age of ai we need more and more processing capability meaning we need more and more high-tech electronic equipments so for that rare earth minerals are extremely important and today china has dominance because they have spent money they have brought policies from 1980s 1990s their policies have led to more and more development of rare earth elements now if you look at the numbers china is mining leader in the world it produces about 270000 
metric tons annually which is 70 percent of the global supply that means in terms of extraction so you need to remember they have huge reserves they extract the maximum they also have processing monopoly because once you extract the rare earth minerals you need to extract them and then use it in electronic equipments so processing capability or refining capability is quite high 85 to 90 percent of refining market is controlled by china they also lead in the rare earth magnet manufacturing 90 percent of global rare earth magnets which are considered the powerful magnets that are needed in high-end electronic equipments 90 percent comes from the chinese itself and of course they control the supply chain as well many countries which extract these rare earth minerals they send it to the chinese for processing because they do not have processing capability india being one of those countries where there is extraction india just accounts for about one percent of the entire rare earth minerals of the of the world in the sense in terms of today's contribution of course india has lot of reserves india comes at number three where we have about 6.9 million metric tons of reserves in our country yes we have started extracting lithium we have started extracting other rare earth elements but we do not have the processing or refining capability we extract them from the ore we extract them and send it to china for processing all right so i hope you get the idea that china is a leader here and to reduce that coercive dependency on the chinese pax silica is a very important alliance apart from that they want to protect materials and capabilities which are required for foundational ai development as i told you rare earths critical minerals they are extremely important for electronics development and ensure that there is a group or an alliance of aligned nations who can contribute towards the new transformative technologies that are coming up and of course build an entire ecosystem so please remember this is not an alliance purely for rare earth elements or critical minerals only you need to understand yes the focus is on these things critical minerals and rare earths but they want to create a complete ecosystem or a complete supply chain which will not be disruptive we have seen such disruption especially during 2020 covid pandemic times where there was a lot of dependence on the chinese for the chips that's why an alliance has been announced apart from that the pack silica if you look at its scope just to put it into perspective for you it's not just about one particular aspect but they the focus is critical minerals and energy inputs yes but they also want advanced manufacturing and semiconductor design for artificial intelligence infrastructure for building complete logistics and supply ecosystem and ultimately information and communications technology systems as well there would also be focus on building fiber optics fiber optic cable connections and data centers between these member countries so a very very important alliance which has been announced now question comes is what will these countries do of course they are going to pull in the resources us being the leader here they will pull in the resources they will go for joint projects where they are going to address ai supply chain opportunities and vulnerabilities wherever are there they are going to resolve those they will develop joint ventures and strategic co-investment opportunities they are going to work on protect protecting these sensitive technologies and build a trusted ecosystem for the future ai by this pax silica the focus areas would be of course extraction of rare earth elements critical minerals then processing them then semiconductor design fabrication packaging logistics everything in fact energy grid connection and mineral processing among the partner countries so it's not not a i would say narrow minded alliance it's a it's an alliance looking at the future where going years ahead or i would say probably a couple of decades ahead where they want to create such an ecosystem where the aligned countries or countries with similar interests they come together and develop the new age tech that we are looking or we will be looking at in the upcoming years all right now question comes sir why has india been left out it's quite interesting if, if you look at the alliance us plus other eight members india already partners or india has close relationship with many of the players you do understand we have been aligning with united states of america from 2015 yes there have been so many initiatives which have come to counter the chinese or to go for development in the indo-pacific region i would say quad is one of the primary examples the quad architecture india is an ally in the quad india is there us is there japan and australia are there 
Apart from this, India is also a member of another framework called I2U2, which was announced a few years back. India, Israel, US and UAE. So, India is a member of Quad also and I2U2 also. Despite such closeness, India has been excluded from this Pax Silica Alliance, which is very interesting. All right. Again, when the US State Department announced about Pax Silica, Pax Silica, they did not mention specifically about why India has been excluded, but they mentioned about the countries who are members here or who are allies, close allies of US. They, they are the members. Probably in future, we may be looking at India becoming a member. But as of now, if you want to understand why India has been left out, is it is it is it that India has been singled out of it? No. You do understand Canada is also a developed country. Canada is also not a member. It has been given observer status. It's not that India has been singled out. But if you look at Pact Silica and its intentions, yes, they want to counter the Chinese. Yes, their focus is on critical minerals, rare earths, its processing, in fact, building a complete ecosystem. If you look at India, what is India's contribution towards artificial intelligence development? Semiconductor supply chain. At the global level, as I told you, India has a very weak position as of now. In terms of rare earth processing, critical minerals, India has very limited refining capacity. As of today, India contributes to about hardly 1 to 2 percent of extraction of rare earths. Yes, we have found a lot of reserves of lithium in Jammu and Kashmir. There are there are some companies which are working, some private companies, uh, Adani, Adani companies are working towards rare earth extraction. Uh, there is Kabil, there is government company which is working, right? So, some government companies are coming. There is GMDC, NMDC, different companies are today working towards rare earth. But we do not have refining capacity. As I told you, we extract we send it to China for further processing. So, we need to develop or we need to become self-reliant in this particular area. Apart from that, in India, there is another problem that the project execution and the development is quite slow. I don't need to get into the reasons for that. There is a lot of red tapeism, a lot of corruption, a lot of other things that you keep on studying. Yes. So, project execution delays are also one of the issues which might be a factor. Apart from that, US has preferred allies. Now, there is US preference for allies. Now, India is not, I, I wouldn't say India is not an ally. India is a partner with everybody. We do not believe in alliances. We believe in partnerships. Yes, we believe in strategic autonomy. We have close partnership with US also. And we, are, we have close partnership with Russia also. Both of those are at loggerheads for a very long time. You do understand. But US here prefers more and more allies. And here, we are talking about artificial intelligence, emerging technology, where trust is extremely important. And that's why a lot of closeness. Now, to counter this point, you might come up with one particular one particular explanation, sir. I understand about the membership. We saw the members. Japan is a member. Netherlands is a member. Australia, UK, Singapore, Israel. Very fine. But what about UAE? Right. This is one exception, uh, which, which is a little tough to fathom for us. But if you look at UAE, a few months back, UAE has signed $1.8 billion partnership with United States of America for critical mineral processing. Probably that agreement would have had a huge role in UAE being included in this alliance as well. So that's a, a very important point to notice here. Apart from this, yes, political reasons uh, would be one of the important issue. We have been looking at this news a lot from uh, last few days. Opposition has also highlighted this. This, of course, that uh, this was bound to happen because looking at the developments between India and United States of America, especially in 2025, they have been quite tumultuous. Despite Donald Trump and Prime Minister Modi having good camaraderie, we have been looking at a, a downward trend in Indo-US relationship. The trade deal is still under negotiations. Donald Trump and his administration has imposed heavy tariffs on Indian exports to United States of America. So, all these things are there. Apart from that, you do know that Donald Trump has been continuously reiterating his stance that he was the one who stopped the war between India and Pakistan and the government has not accepted that. Government has, has been silent over that point and the opposition is trying to corner the government on these issues. So, political reasons might be one of the uh, important factor here but there are other factors as well predominantly india being 
not a major player in the critical minerals development and critical processing infrastructure in our country so what do we need to do see it's it's not it's not the end of road for india first of all we need to understand yes today we are not partner of pax silica but we have been a member of another mineral security partnership which was launched in 2022 again that was also a quite big body where australia canada estonia finland france germany us uk eu many members were there Again, the intention here was also the same thing. We have seen during 2020 pandemic, there was a lot of dependence on the Chinese, especially for electronic equipment import from the Chinese and their dependence. It, it led to, I would say, an eye-opening incident for all these countries who announced MSP, the Mineral Security Partnership. India is still a member of this, okay? India is not a member of Pax Silica. And we know that our capability is not very high in terms of critical critical mineral uh, analysis or critical mineral extraction and development but india is trying to expand as i told you there are many companies which are already working gmdc nmdc uh, there is kabil khanish videsh india limited private companies have have also been uh, exploring this idea of extracting rare earths and critical minerals so india is not just looking to develop its infrastructure in our country we are also trying to expand and connect with other countries in Argentina, Kabil, Khanij Bidesh India Limited has exclusive rights for exploration and development in the Katamarka province for lithium blocks. With Australia, there is already an MOU for due diligence in lithium and cobalt assets. In Chile and other areas in South America, we, we are having negotiations currently for critical mineral processing. So India is trying to develop its own capability within the country. We are also trying to explore the outside avenues of critical and rare earth minerals so what do we need to do yes currently it's a little concerning that india has been sidelined looking at india's size looking at india's uh, india's market india the opportunities with india it's a immediate concern that maybe we are left out of the ai tech global order but the exclusion uh, it, it's not just because of political reasons it's it's mainly because of our own limited capability in terms of critical mineral critical mineral uh, supply chain or we have a minimum role in critical mineral ecosystem as of today so what we need to do we need to scale up our processing first and we are trying to do it and maybe in future maybe in future we might be joining pax silica as of now we are not a member so we are not a founder member for sure that is clear now but all is not the end for india we might be looking at some development yes we are a member of msp and if we are if we are able to play a bigger role in the critical mineral ecosystem at the global level of course there would be a seat at this table also for india let's wait and watch what exactly happens under this pack silica and how india is going to respond towards these developments if there is any new news or if there is any highlight we are going to have a discussion on UPS is simplified for sure. But that's it in the current discussion. Thank you for watching this video. If you've liked the video, if you have any queries, if you have any doubts, you can always connect to me on these IDs. At the rate Rahul Sai Triple Two is my Instagram ID. This is my number also where you can reach out to me if you have any doubts regarding preparation. Thank you again. Jai Hind.